Now we're going to move into the appendicular skeleton. And remember, this is referring to the appendages or the limbs coming off of the axial skeleton. First, we're going to focus on the pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle. The two main parts to the pectoral girdle is the clavicle or collarbone and then the scapula or the shoulder blade. And this has connection or contact with the thoracic cavity and the humerus. So the collarbone or clavicle is a double curved bone. It is anterior or at the front of the thoracic cavity. There are two of them, one on the left and right side of the body. It does attach to the sternum or specifically the manubrium of the sternum and then also attaches to the scapula. It does act as a brace, keeping the arm away from the thorax and prevents shoulder dislocation. The scapular shoulder blade also is a paired bone, so one on the left and one on the right. It is a major point of muscle attachment for the arms to move, and it does not have a large uh, attachment to the thorax, allowing for more freedom to move. You can also see there's a little groove or indentation on the left side. That's where the humerus is going to attach to. That groove is called the glenoid cavity, and that is more of a socket of the scapula for the humerus to articulate with, allowing for movement. Now, the problem with this is that it does allow, if you ever heard of uh, shoulder dislocation, it is going to dislocate easily, even though it does provide a great deal of motion for the arm and humerus. Now let's look at the bones of the arm. We're going to be addressing the long bones as well as the short bones of the hand. The humerus is the upper arm bone. It will have a ball and socket articulation with the scapula, as we said, at the glenoid cavity but then it will also have a hinge articulation at the radius and ulna, specifically the ulna. You can see the ulna primarily making up that elbow. So the ulna is the thinner and longer bone of the two bones of the forearm, so it is thinner than the radius. Uh, it does make up the elbow, uh, creating a hinge articulation so it is going to be a little larger at the humerus articulation, and then it gets very thin when it gets close to the hand. So the ulna is going to attach on the pinky side of your hand. So we want to remember ulna attaching at the pinky. The radius, however, is going to be the thicker bone. It's going to be a little smaller at the elbow but then it gets larger and it's going to be larger at the wrist and this is going to be at the thumb side. This does, especially at the thumb side, create a condyloid joint or ellipsoid. Think of ellipse, a curved structure as it connects to the carpals or the wrist bones. So let's talk about the bones of the hand. If we're going proximal to distal, so let's start with the carpals, which are the wrist bones. This is going to have some different articulations. As we said, the ellipsoid articulation, the ellipsoid articulation with the radius. And then we move and we have the metacarpals. Now the metacarpals are identified as metacarpal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 by Roman numerals. And we start at 1 on the thumb side. Now, if you look at your hand, the metacarpals are not going to be separate. This is basically in the palm of your hand. So the metacarpals are going to be covered by skin and muscle. So they are not separate fingers yet. Not until you get to the phalanges, which are more distal, and you have your three separate bones in the fingers, except you have two on your thumb. So the phalanges, you are free to move and flex and extend. 
but the metacarpals, you're not going to see them individually. So we did talk about further away from the body is the distal. The ones in the middle for the little phalanges are called intermediate, and then the ones closer to the metacarpals are going to be the proximal phalanges. Now I'm going to give you extra credit and that's going to be identifying the carpals. Now you do not have to know all of the carpals by name except for extra credit. Now there are a total of eight of them and you can see them here as well color coded. Now we're going to move into the pelvic girdle. Now there are certain names of the pelvis and the pelvis is separated into two parts and we'll identify those on a anterior and lateral view. We are going to look at the ilium, pubis, and ischium bones. Now the ischium is more of the sitting kind of bone that is part of uh, the kind of butt area. At the top of the ilium you have a sort of crest and that is called the iliac crest. So iliac coming from ilium. And so this is a lateral view. Uh, the pubis is going to be more at the front, while the ischium is going to be at the back or posterior. Now you do have the pubic symphysis, which is an articulation or a space between the two pelvic bones. And this is primarily going to be made of your hyaline and fibrocartilage, a kind of a mixture of the two. Uh, this does help with uh, flexibility, especially for women at childbirth. So this is going to separate the left and right pelvic bones. And it, as we said, cartilage uh, acts as a cushion, takes in that impact as people move around. So it does take an impact of the weight of the body as it's coming down from the upper to the lower part of the body. So here you can see the pubic symphysis, which is primarily made of cartilage. You can see the difference between the male and female pelvic bones. You can see the difference in the iliac crest, as well as how wide, shallow the female pelvic bones are compared to the more narrow male bones. You can also see a difference in the pubic arch, how it is very narrow and the female pubic arch is more wide. Now let's talk about the bones of the legs. We're not just going to talk about the long bones, but we are going to talk about the patella kneecap, ankle bones, and bones of the foot. So the femur is the thigh bone. It is ball and socket at the articulation of the pelvis. And then it is a hinge articulation at the knee. So we have the kneecap or the patella. And you may have heard of the patellar tendon as it's held together by tendons which connects muscle to bone. So at the articulation of the femur and tibia, we have two ligaments that you may have heard of. We have the ACL, which anterior cruciate ligament, and we have the posterior cruciate lig ligament. And we have the posterior cruciate ligament, and anterior is referring to front, and posterior is behind or back. Now cruciate is referring to cross, so they do crisscross as the anterior cruciate ligament goes one direction, the posterior is going to be going the other direction. So it is very common, you may have heard, if people are turning and rotating very quickly. Um, we said that the knee is a hinge joint and not a rotation articulation. So it's very easy for the ACL to tear as someone is turning and turning that knee. Now the tibia is known as the shin bone and it is a lot larger at the hinge joint of the femur and then it gets thinner as it comes down to the ankle. 
Next to the tibia, we have a very thinner bone, and the thinner bone is going to be more on the outside. So the tibia is going to be the larger inner bone, while the tibia is going to be the smaller outer bone of the lower leg. So this is actually called the calf bone. So it's going to be more on the outside. If you feel your leg or your tibia, you can definitely feel it on the inside at the shin, but then you have your tibia, which is going to be more on the lateral outside. The fibula is going to be on the lateral outside. Now we're going to end with the bones of the foot. Then we have the calcaneus bone, which is the heel bone. And then we have the talus, which connects to the tibia, so the articulation at the tibia. Just like we have the carpals and metacarpals, we're going to have the tarsals, which are the ankle bones. And then the metatarsals are going to make up the center of the foot. You're not going to see them individually, just like the metacarpals. But then you're going to see the phalanges, which are the toes. And just like the phalanges of the hand, you're going to have proximal, intermediate, and distal phalanges. And just like the thumb, you're only going to have two with the toe. And you can see that here.